since the beginning of time. Mankind has looked up to the heavens and wondered. What are the big questions in life? Why are we here? Who are we? What is potential vorticity? Well, these kinds of questions can only be answered by a trip to the seaside. So here I am, on the remote Scottish island of Iran, with the National Centre for Atmospheric Science to find out. <laughs> Any ideas? Uh, that's something I'm not very good at, actually. Um, I'm a chemist. Hello. Hello. Have you got time to talk about potential vorticity? About what? It's something to do with whirly whirly things going round in the atmosphere. That sounds That's good. That's as much as I that know. That sounds good, James. Yeah? Yeah. Any guesses? Potential vorticity? Um, can you tell us about potential vorticity? No. I suppose if it's vortex, it's going to be sort of a circular. Learning potentially. Can I pass on this one? No, just no, no. It is in fact uh, some sort of uh, dark magic that the meteorologist uses to uh, work out where air parcels have come from. <laughs> you want, do you want to go first or shall I, shall I go first? Um. <laughs> Potential vorticity is a quantity that we can calculate from atmospheric observations which can be used to tell you in a very simple way where the air is moving. If you were to take a normal measurement of the atmosphere like pressure or temperature then uh, for a particular blob of air as the air moved around those quantities would change. So looking at maps of those quantities doesn't really tell you where the air is moving. So in the middle of the atmosphere and the upper parts of the atmosphere you have this quantity called potential vorticity that flows around the globe and you can use it uh, as, as a diagnostic. Because the Earth itself is rotating, uh, the atmosphere, people, everything has a rotating motion. Everything is rotating, in fact, about the Earth's rotational axis. Uh, and this means that all fluid particles, all parts of the atmosphere, have a, a vorticity, a rotating motion. So in a cyclone, you've got rapid rotation of the air, for example, and that's one of the ingredients that goes into potential vorticity. To illustrate potential vorticity, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to draw a physicist's impression of an ice skater. <laughs> There she is, the physicist's impression of an ice skater. Now the ice skater has got herself into a tight spin and she wants to get out of the tight spin and so she throws her arms out. And she throws her arms out to assume this shape here. So she goes from being a long thin cylinder to a short thick cylinder. So this cylinder rotates very quickly and this cylinder rotates slowly and that's conservation of angular momentum. So now we come back to the principal property of uh, potential vorticity and that is it is a quantity that is conserved in the atmosphere. Isn't it like amazing when I think of like the physics up there in the stars it's the same as the physics here it's like on a tiny scale within me and it's just it just blows my mind. If you get a parcel of fluid which is stretched like this and you squash it as it flows through the atmosphere then the spinning motion will slow down. It is this combination of the depth of the fluid and the height of the fluid parcel that we call the potential vorticity. And in fact, the potential vorticity in this simple case would simply be equal to the vorticity divided by the depth, which in this case simply comes out to be the angular moment, the angular velocity divided by the depth of the fluid parcel. If you can get this, you've got the gist of potential vorticity. Yeah, it's magic, basically. Yeah. Okay.
Uh, but when you break it down, it's it's very clever magic. Um, uh, it's stuffed. Stuff turns uh, and and has a temperature. And then um, when the temperature changes and the stuff turns differently, uh, it stays the same. Wow. Potential for autistic can be used as a as a proxy really for strong vertical motions. It's also very difficult to understand. Okay. I'm not sure I understand it. So sometimes you get these stratospheric incursions, i.e. air from the stratosphere comes down and you can get lots of instability in the vertical. You can get these stratospheric intrusions of ozone which could be mistaken as pollution and that gets, brings in a lot of issues for policymakers. So are we actually attributing this to factories and pollution from Europe or is it just a naturally occurring event where you get huge spikes in ozone, you know, over 80 ppb? So when you look at potential vorticity, it can be used as a, as a, a, a diagnostic to say something's going to happen. So you can very easily see features like um, air masses being ripped away from the so-called polar vortex and carried down to our mid-latitudes. So we can see how the, the air moves around. High potential vorticity, which comes from the polar regions when it moves into mid-latitudes, is associated generally with bad weather. So it's a really visual diagnostic way of understanding the type of weather that you're going to get from um, larger scale charts. If you belong to the meteorological club or one of the elite meteorologists, you'll use the word potential vorticity as some sort of membership. So if you don't understand what potential for is, you're not part of the elite club in meteorology. Potential vortices is absolutely useless.